During Indigenous Sports Month this year, retired Indigenous Australian tennis player and cricketer Ashley Barty opened up about her two biggest inspirations in a self-penned column. Ash Barty was ranked number one in the world in singles by the Women's Tennis Association, the second Australian tennis player to do so after Yvonne Cauley. Now, she talks about how Cauley served as one of her role models, along with Kathy Freeman. First up, Ashley's column. Ash began her column by writing about how one moment is all it takes to turn dreams into reality, the significance of which doesn't matter to anyone but oneself. Ash believes strongly that great storytelling is full to the brim with wisdom and inspiration. All one must do is extract them from the stories they witness. The champions that became her lifelong inspirations were themselves part of the most legendary stories that'll be unforgettable for a long, long time in Australia and across the globe as well. Now, onto Yvonne Colley. Her first inspiration was, of course, Yvonne Gulagong Colley. Gulagong was another indigenous Australian tennis player, known globally for her victory in the 1980s Wimbledon tournament, a tournament where she became the first mother to win the All England Club, and possibly one of the greatest victories in the history of tennis. Gulagong grew up in Baralan, Wheat Town in New South Wales, with seven siblings under a one-story tin shack house made of dirt floors with no electricity. Her story is one that inspires thousands, largely because of her Aborigine heritage. Her family was the only one of its kind in their town. Belonging to the Wiradjuri tribe, the Gulagong family faced prejudice and bigotry from the people around them, with no guarantee of how their future would pan out, or what prospects awaited them. In the 1980s Wimbledon tournament, Yvonne defeated Chris Everett Lloyd in an iconic final match, showing her audience clear as day that she wouldn't be retiring for at least one more year, not when she delivered such an incredible performance. Her last triumph before this one was in 1971. This one marked her legacy as being the first mother to win the Wimbledon crown ever since Lambert Chambers of Britain in 1914. Millions of viewers, both at Wimbledon and across the world, were pleasantly surprised and overjoyed to see this powerful, unflinching side of Yvonne. There was not a single ounce of nervous energy in her demeanor, something that had been a hurdle for her at previous big occasions. The tennis player expressed how determined she was this time around, feeling a lot more aggressive than she ever had before, wanting nothing more than to win. Next, we have the tribute to Yvonne. When Ash Bart won her first Wimbledon title in July 2021, she was her calm, peaceful self that we so love seeing in her interviews, keeping her cool throughout the interview and evidently unfazed by her victory. When she was asked about following in the footsteps of Yvonne, her voice shook with emotion as she expressed her desire to make Yvonne proud. She wore a dress that was specifically designed according to Collie's, the iconic one she wore in the 1971 Wimbledon. What made it even more special is that Barty won her first Wimbledon tournament exactly 50 years and a week after Collie did. In her column, the tennis player expressed how Yvonne was the greatest storyteller she knew, emphasizing on how Yvonne's wooden racket played a significant role in her story. It was her first racket, and despite having won Wimbledon and shaken hands with celebrities across the world, she is proud of that wooden racket to this day. Ash detailed how a bat of such humble origins stayed by Yvonne's side, helping a young, ambitious girl from a small town become a Grand Slam champion, an inspiration to millions across the world. Let's talk on Yvonne's support. Every time Yvonne tells her story to youngsters, hanging onto her every word, you can see the inspiration in their eyes. Her story gives them hope that they too can go to such great lengths if they try. Yvonne's joyous, sincere nature was a beacon of light for Ash herself, and she expresses how the hope Yvonne evoked caused magic to occur. After all, she was one of the youngsters who met Yvonne as a teen, and it helped her on the path to realizing and following her own dreams. Ashley goes on to talk about how she ran into Yvonne and Kathy Freeman in Melbourne Park after her victory at the 2021 Australian Open. Sharing her triumph with her role models was an amazing moment. They were there for her victory, just like they helped her through the hardships. In 2014, Barty took a break from tennis, and Yvonne texted her words of support, telling her to have fun and be unafraid, because those who love her will always do so. And now, for Kathy Freeman. Ash expressed through her writing how it would have been amazing had she got the chance to watch Kathy in action on the Sydney 2000 Olympics track. Nevertheless, Kathy's story alone motivated her to great heights in the years after. Back then, Ash was too young to truly internalize the greatness of Freeman's accomplishments, not realizing how they brought thousands of Australians together until much later. Kathy Freeman, an Australian sprinter whose forte 
say was the 400-meter run, became the first Australian Aboriginal person to win an individual Olympic gold medal in the year 2000. As a child, Freeman always felt lesser than others because of her indigenous heritage, and even though her own grandfather was a veteran of the First World War, his service for his country was never acknowledged to the extent that it warranted. On the other hand, her maternal great-grandparents were exiled to the Palm Island colony for not handing the local police full control of their wages. As the years passed, Freeman became more and more firm about wanting to represent her people in a way that was true to them, something that escalated in light of the discrimination and prejudice her family faced. Kathy's support. After Ashley's loss in the semifinals of the Australian Open 2020, Kathy watched her match live from the audience, and it amazed Ash how Kathy showed up to support her despite her defeat. After the match, she was with her psychology coach, Ben Crow, who advised her to speak to Kathy on the phone. While she attempted to thank Kathy and express what she meant to her, Ashley broke down on the phone, saying how much she wanted to be like Kathy. The sprinter consoled her, reassuring her that being herself was the best thing she could do for herself, and that defeats are normal. One must, however, keep believing in oneself. Though Barty was too young to see Kathy ever run, she continues to be inspired by her story and achievements, 22 years after her jaw-dropping triumph in Sydney, igniting Barty's passion. The tennis player emphasized on how seeing two amazing Aboriginal women being in the lead is one of the most motivating things for her. Not only that, but the work they did outside of their sports is even more valuable. Ash still feels like the youngest between the three of them, not just because of the age gap, but because of the difference in wisdom between them. Though Barty may have had more than one ping moment on the tennis court, she is still learning about herself as a person, which, though daunting, is an extremely intriguing process to go through. She speaks about how her internal journey is just beginning, despite tennis having taken her around the world the same way that sports was just a small part of Kathy and Yvonne's stories. Kathy and Yvonne both have foundations of their own, and witnessing their work firsthand, along with meeting people who they've helped, made Barty realize how many people they've enabled success for. With her own team, Barty is now looking at how she can play her part in helping children across Australia to tap into their potential and succeed in the ways they desire. The tennis player has traveled to the most remote parts of the continent to speak about her passion for tennis, sports, and the role that one's passion can play in aiding young people with finding their path. Expressing her excitement for what's to come next, she hopes that her story can pave the way for others, the same way she learned to pursue her dreams after witnessing Yvonne's and Kathy's. Finally, some words of wisdom. Barty ended her piece by expressing how she has always believed that every person to ever exist has the capability to inspire, the capability to experience their own ping moment. It doesn't matter who sees the moment. Sometimes millions witness it, sometimes only a handful, but it's very much there, hidden in every individual's life and waiting to be uncovered. One does not have to be a sports champion to take the lead, she says. It doesn't matter what career you pursue when it comes to leading. The good thing about leading is that you can set an example no matter what, whether you are a shop assistant, cashier, teacher, lawyer, parent, or anything else under the sun, you have the ability to inspire. Even if your moment seems negligible to your own self, conveying it to others gives it the potential to turn someone's dream into reality. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of Ash Barty's motivation to succeed? Do you feel like you've experienced your moment already? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.